All right, you guys. All right, this is uh, Wednesday, the 22nd. And I just listened to another great call by the hamster. And yesterday's was good. I'm not going to summarize it because you guys should be listening yourself, but I can give you a couple of the points over the last two calls that the hamster gave that were really excellent. So on Tuesday, the 21st, and um, I think you know the numbers, but uh, every day at, at 20 of 4, 340, that the market's open, you can dial 425-436-6326. That's 425-436-6326. And then the code is 376-6434. 376 6434. Anyway, um, Gary made a, a lot of uh, uh, really good points. Today, I'll do today because it's in my head and I'll look at yesterday's afterward. But, you know, he always starts out by talking about how it's another day of fraud. <laughs> and that's exactly right, it's another day of fraud. Um, but he also points out that, which I didn't really do that well on, on my call that a lot of these wash trades are uh, there to get you to sell which I didn't say to you but they um, it's manip it's manipulation today he went through and he listed the the um, when we were looking the offers you had GTSM which he said is a shit uh, market maker 100 shares for sale J A J A N E, which i think is just a computerized one 100 100 shares for sale otcx 100 shares for sale nite 100 shares for sale intl 100 shares for sale and this late joker to the game wabr 100 shares for sale i stopped there but his point is you're you're you know, this is nothing. If they really wanted to sell 100 shares, wouldn't they just drop it down, take the two cent hit on 100 shares? It's nothing. So they're just trying to get you to sell. And that's the point of my videos to you guys. It's not because I know anything better than ham. All you need to listen to is the hamster. What I think happens is that the markets Guys like Cam or myself, we talk so quickly because there's a lingo and all that. It's just like going into a car dealership or a doctor's office or on an oil well. There's all sorts of shorthand that uh, you know you don't you don't always get. And what I would love to be able to do is get you comfortable with holding your position. I'm not giving advice to buy or sell this or hold it. I'm just doing it as a, uh, you know, an exercise and in, in we're watching this one. But hypothetically, you know, I don't want anyone shaken out. Now, Ham did point out, no one's getting out. He talked about the spoofing and the washing trades, which I just said. It's the same tricks over and over to try to get you to sell. Uh, but he, he really pointed points out that these guys are lo the shorts are losing money every day it costs money to carry and think about that um, this real short is uh, probably in the cubicle next to the Kramers or it's or they're in the, down the hall from the Kramers so while Gibson Dunn might technically be correct uh, when they they say that their client is not shorting, I think Gibson Dunn is hiding behind the legal de definitions of what is is, like the lawyer Bill Clinton said, instead of morality. Morality, what the big guy upstairs is going to judge us on, I think. Who knows? is that um, what's right and wrong and Gibson Dunn knows that they're they, they've been hired 
to uh, protect these guys from uh, the pretty much verifiable ac accusations that they've been shorting, naked shorting shares, not just in GTII, but VNUE has filed against them. So I, I just think lawyers have their own tricks, just like short sellers have their own tricks. Um, I think this is a good point to place to tell you. I, one of my goals is to sort of hit, hold hands with you to to get get you comfortable with waiting and not not panicking out. But but if you want to sell, sell. I'm you know I'm not. I really am not. Uh, I I have no relationship with the company, so you know I have no financial interest in it. I have a small position, and that's it. So I'm talk I'm talking my own spit. Um, but the other thing is, uh, I, I think we all as a group should realize that we're not trying to tilt at windmills. We're not trying to, you know, change the whole system, although I think we will. We just want to focus on this one stock and what's going to make this stock, what's going to light the uh, tinder to make the, make the flames blow up. So, uh, uh, anyway, he went on, um, uh, he, he really makes, always makes a point, you never know when they're going to ring the bell. Um, he, he, you know, he says whether it's 10 million or 150 million, uh, uh, once they start buying, the buying is going to be ferocious. And, uh, it's hard for you to believe, but the um, uh, shares have to be bought back. Um, so the other thing I liked that he said on this call is he reminded us that the um, warrant is outstanding at 275, and in the hamster's opinion, there's eight to ten million shares represented by those warrants that that brokerage firms just put IOUs into the accounts of their clients. And so once the stock goes to three or four dollars, five dollars, let's just say it goes to five dollars, that's 10 million shares times five dollars, that's 50 million dollars that the brokerage firms are going to have to uh, cough up to honor their contractual obligations with you. So, you know, as he puts it, the damage model is there. He potentially billions of dollars of loss, and uh, uh, he, he he pointed out that if the stock goes to 500, there's going to be prime brokers going out of business. Um, but the money to pay what's for your 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 orders to sell will ultimately probably come from the uh, DTCC unless, you know, some change, some, some government fiat happens. Um, fiat in the sense of an act of government, not fiat is in the sense of the currency. Or the car, fix it again, Tony. Okay, I'm gonna skip talking about him because you can listen to his calls. But, oh, the, the real short, this washing that's going on this is this answers two of his points that he makes. One is they're trying to get you to sell. They don't sell. Um, they 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 kind of walk it down with each other, and they have little codes of how during market hours that they that they speak to each other with the number of shares they're selling. But the real short, which you can find on OTCMarkets.com, I think that's it. You can get the real bid and asks real time. You don't get the real time price, but the real time bid and ask. And if you scroll down, you can see the short position. That's gone from nine, the real short position where this person had to go borrow the shares, pay for it, interest, pay a fee. It's gone down from 910,000 to 830,000. 70,000 of that was last week when they, they 
across 70,000 instantaneously. This is a cost of doing business to the, my distinction is that pre uh, uh, payoff of the note, it was the Kramers, post payoff of the note, it's the Kermits. I don't know, we don't know for sure who it is, but there's only one short seller that would benefit from this and that's the person that got trapped or the people that got trapped shorting the stock in my opinion before the note was issued and during the time the note was issued and then uh, global tech paid off the note and so there's a big naked you know a beached whale that can't get swimming out to sea so they keep they keep uh, they keep shorting and uh, uh, they being the Kermits. I, I, anyway, um, anyway the, the, the cost of crossing those shares, so it, let's say the, the real short sold it, sold shares at $1.20 and, and now the and it went to 170 he's panicking and hey you were calling up the Kermits and saying you owe me you know on a million shares you owe me uh, 50 cents uh, you know three hundred thousand uh, dollars and and so no we'll take care of it we'll take so they drive it down with these these stair step downs amongst market makers that are all beholden to them so then they got to cross those trades. Well, the crossing isn't for free. They, they're just moving the real short into the Kermit's naked short. And the Kermit's are taking a, well, right now it looks like it's not a loss, but ultimately that'll take a loss. They're just adding to their problem. These are guys just, um, <clears throat> what's that saying when you're digging a hole? stop digging they're just build, digging a bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger hole for yourself so anyway <clears throat> uh, the hamster also pointed out that the IRS is probably and I agree with them this is something that I've harped on myself is that the IRS isn't there to protect the DTCC or to protect the hedge funds its job is to collect revenue for Uncle Sam and when you sell, when a short sells these trades, they don't have a close. It, let's say they sell it at a uh, dollar twenty, and let's just imagine that they could drive GTII into bankruptcy. The way they drive companies into bankruptcy is when you, the reason you go public. Otherwise, you would just do everything privately. But the reason originally that you go public is so that you have currency, your stock to acquire uh, talent, you know, employ people, or to acquire other companies, or to, to grow bigger, to be a, or just to go into the open market and bring in money. Well, uh, by driving the stock price down, like the couple of examples I gave before, uh, and I'll show you just now, but if you drive a stock price from 10 cents down to 0 0.005, you make it really hard for the company to issue new shares without diluting everybody massively. And it's really hard to make acquisitions. So essentially, the company goes in either dormant or into bankruptcy. And that's what these guys count on. And so then they've sold stock but there's no closing transaction. So that's one angle that uh, the, ham, the ham meister is going after. And uh, uh, he's talking to law enforcement. He's not doing it. He's not doing it for a uh, whistleblower. Um, and, and, you know, and he emphasizes, he always does that you've got to have lawyers and dot the I's, cross the T's when you're a company, when you're a short seller, you don't do any of that. Um, 
and I already told you that he's using a number nobody knows for sure, but 150 million naked short versus 35 million long. That is a massive, that is a massive uh, unbalanced, not balanced situation. And if the prime broker for the Kramers and the prime broker for the Kermits ever started by ha, had to buy that all back in, or it, it's your brokerage firm that calls up uh, the, their prime broker and says, we need these shares. That's 35 million real shares available to satisfy a buyback of 150 million. Just go through any scenario in your head. How's that gonna happen without the stock? Like my prediction, this is my prediction. It's a little bit hyperbolic just because I wanted to catch it in your head. I think it's gonna be a $500 stock in 50 minutes. But what if it's a $50 stock in five hours it, or five days? It's still a huge move. My prediction, $500 in 50 minutes. Within one hour, it'll be $500. When the if and when the buy-in happens, and then Kramer quoted uh, Donny, this guy Donahue, which is a good thing to keep in mind. It's he's on Twitter that they have to buy these shares back. All right, I'm going to leave it at that because it's I, it's getting. <laughs> I always talk too much, basically. It's fine, leaving. So what I want to get into your head today is some facts that will comfort you while you you panic. I even even I today am going. Oh my God, it's. A dollar six. Well, let me talk about that. A dollar six. This stock. We used to have a saying that I was taught. This stock trades by appointment. Trades by appointment. There are no shares for sale. And when buyers come in, it moves up. It trades by appointment. Everything you're seeing, almost everything you're seeing, that's marking the tape is a fraud. It's uh, uh, manipulated, and you, you should not, it's hard not to, to look at it. It's how your account is valued. You go, oh my God, I'm down. But if any buying comes in, the difference between a dollar six, a dollar sixty, and sixteen dollars will will be an intake, a sharp intake of air. Uh, you know, it'll be a deep breath. When the buying comes in, this will be $21 probably on the opening trade, and then it's it's off to the races. Depending on who's got, uh, where where our, mostly our group's stop loss orders are. But even if we had a million or five million shares to sell between five and $25 a share, that's gonna, it's gonna be like hot water on a frying pan, hot fry, cold water on a hot frying pan. It's gonna poof, it's gonna go. But anyway, so I was a little cu curious. As you know, they they took this note out on, uh, on uh, November 27th, 2020. And then they closed it in uh, February of 2021. So uh, GTII borrowed money from the jerks, the jackasses, as Kramer calls them. I mean, as such, <laughs> Hamster calls them. And then within a, 60 to 90 days, they bought it back. And so this doesn't really show that much because it's not big enough. But I'll show it to you. Here's the chart. And um, you, I bracketed it in yellow. That's the term of the note right here. And you can see the stock price. But what I was really wondering is the volume. The volume, and this doesn't really show it. There's a lot of volume here as it went up because they wanted to keep it suppressed. But I was trying to look at the volume. By the way, this chart, <laughs> I would have to say, It's not, I'm not a chartist, but there's always a concern when, when uh, 
when uh, things drag out, 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 time is always a hard thing. On the other hand, this seems to be the resistance, is the support. On the way up, it's resistance. On the way down, it's support. So, and this is an al al algorithmic graph, so that's, that's actually a lot of pennies per share. But uh, I would love to see a little movement. The, this, um, the moving day averages haven't crossed, which is good. And down here is okay. But it's not an exciting chart right now, uh, mainly because there's no volume. It's meaningless, though. Uh, we're not in it as a chart play. Anyway, I wanted to show you, and this is not for people that already understand it, but you go to otcshortreport.com, otcshortreport.com. This is the last 30 days. They don't give you more than that. But look at this. The red is the real volume, and I highlighted the rest in yellow. These guys match the volume almost, it's, it's roughly 50%. Some days, the, well, I'll show you. This is the last 30 days. The high is 80% short right there. The low was one day 13% uh, short right here. But that was when there was only 8,000 shares volume. So it's really meaningless. Um, well, there was, sorry, there was 8,000 short volume, 58,000 shares uh, in real volume. But I drew yellow lines through all of the ones that are around 50, 60, and 70. So most of the time it's 50% shorting. And uh, uh, it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Only eight or nine out of 30 days. Well, I guess that's 20 trading days. So about a third of it is below 50%. All right, so go to OTC Short Report if you want to track that every day. All right, now I wanted to show you, I got to get the right one first. Yeah, Form 8K. See, this is what the company has to do, an 8K. So on uh, 8K is the current report. Any material change, any any uh, quarterly updates. So anyway, this was announced on uh, uh, November 27, 2020. Global Tech Industry closed a securities purchase agreement with Geneva Roth Holdings for the purchase by uh, the Kramers. Geneva Roth Remark Holdings. It's, I'll show you next, it's signed by Kurt Kramer. So I'm gonna just say by the Kramers. It's simpler. So um, uh, they, the company, GTII, purchased from the Kramers a, uh, sorry, the Kramers bought from the company. The Kramers are lending the company money. A promissory note in a total principal amount of 74,800 with a discount of $6,800 plus uh, $3,000 in expenses to be ta taken off. They signed the agreement on the 27th. The money uh, was to be received on November 30th. Okay, the, the note bears an interest of 10% and it can be converted at any time in 180 days which requires registration and um, one of the questions I have is if you're if the Kramers are arguing this is a note not issuance of securities therefore they are not securities dealers why does the entire conversion of sh shares become free to trade after the six months. You're starting the six months at the time of this note. So whatever it converts into, in my mind, was agreed at this point. So that, I, I, you know, again, I'm not a lawyer and you've got to put these theories before judges, but you're creating shares right now. 
and the way this it would cost um, GTII a lot of money to do a public offering for 80 grand for I, I did the total they got sixty five thousand dollars for sixty five thousand dollars well a lot, a lot less than this damn cost. So anyway, the note, <laughs> it's unbelievable. It can be converted at any time after 180 days at, a, at the market price. Well, guess what the market price is? The market price is well, I guess it's in another page. But the market price is the lowest three days price of a three closing price for three days during three trading weeks for 15 trading days um, you take the average of the three lowest closing prices and you multiply that by 75 percent so it's a 25 percent discount that's what the uh, share price will be issued to the Kramers on conversion so a well-oiled machine like the Kramers just sell every day keep it going down 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 but you've got 180 days to be, to drive it down and then at the end uh, the final three weeks you just get you get an average of those uh, lowest three closings okay so it's 25 percent discount and the company is required to reserve five times the number of shares of common stock issuable on full conversion of the promissory note. And this is a little bit confusing, but it says based on the conversion price of the note in effect from time to time. And then comma, initially 9,777,777 shares. It's a little bit like the Second Amendment, it depends on how you understand those commas. Um, there's more, so I'll skip it for now. So that's the Form 8K. You can go to the SEC and get it. Here is the, you get two things. You have a securities purchase agreement and you have the note. So. I'm going to go with the, the note with the securities purchase agreement first. I'm just reading from it so you see what it is. Um, this is between GTII, who has their address at 511 Sixth Avenue, New York, New York, and Geneva Roth Remark Holdings, a New York corporation, which matters because they were sued in New York and they another company um, uh, just got a ruling that these kind of contracts are us usury, which usurious, which is illegal. Okay, the address of uh, the Kramers, Geneva Roth Remark Holdings, Inc. is 111 Great Neck Road, Suite 216, Great Neck, New York, 11021. That's the buyer. So the company, GTII, and the buyer are executing and delivering this agreement in reliance upon the exemption from securities registration afforded from the, by the rules and regulations as promulgated by the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC, under the Securities Act of 1933, and as amended. Um, some of those things, just in general, the investment, this is section two, the buyer, which is the Kramers, they represent that the buyer is purchasing the note and the shares of common stock issuable upon conversion of or otherwise pursuant to the note. Collect those shares being collectively spoken of as conversion shares and the note, which is called securities. They're buying this for their own account and not with a present view, 
present actually means in the near future, but I think they're talking about uh, this moment in time. That's how people use that word sometimes. Um, but it says, with not with a present view towards the public sale or distribution thereof, except pursuant to sales registered or exempted from registration under the 1933 Act, then, the, so that's one thing to, to get an exemption is you're not selling it to the public. Two, uh, you're an accredited investor, which basically uh, used to be, I think it still is, if your income for the last couple of years is over $200,000, if you're single, and if, you're, um, if you have a million dollars in assets, um, some, sometimes defined as net of your home, or maybe always defined that way. Um, and then they're, they're, the buyer understands that the securities are offered and sold to it in reliance upon specific exemptions from the registration requirements of the United States federal and state securities laws, and that the company, GTII, is relying on the truth and accuracy and the buyer's compliance, that's, that's the Kramer's compliance with the representation, rep, mm, representations, warranties, agreements, acknowledgements, and understandings of the buyer set forth herein. And then this is the writing of the stamp that goes on the securities when you, when they're restricted shares. Okay, so, Closing, I've already told you, is uh, November 30. The Kramers promised additional tranches of financing of up to $1 million in aggregate, subject to further agreements between the company and the Kramers. So I guess that's the carrot that, that the Kramers are offering. But I also think um, uh, Reichman caught on pretty quickly what this was about. Okay, page after page after page after page, which someday I'll go through. All right, so you go to page seven, and this is under the heading of Covenants 4, uh, and this is what basically the Kramers are saying, uh, blah, blah, blah. But the buyer, the Kramers, H, the buyer is not a quote-unquote dealer. The buyer and the company, the Kramers and GTII, hereby acknowledge and agree that the buyer has not, one, acted as an underwriter, two, acted as a market maker or a specialist, three, acted as a de facto market maker, or four, conducted any other professional market maker activities such as providing investment advice, extending credit and lending securities in connection, and thus the buyer is not a quote-unquote dealer, as such terms are defined in the 1934 Act. So it's good. Um, the Kramers have gotten the company who, as far as I can tell, has, has no, other than trying to do their best to follow the law, which they do very, quite, uh, scrupulous, scrupulously, but I don't think that the company or its chairman um, have a, a role in uh, defining, interpreting, or uh, enforcing the regulations of the SEC and FINRA. So to get the company to say that the Kramers are, are not a dealer, I think is meaningless. I, I don't think the company has the, uh, unless they took the Series 7 uh, or owned a broker-dealer or were a broker-dealer themselves or studied securities law, I don't think the company itself has the basis to determine whether or not the Kramers are a dealer. But anyway, that's my opinion.
Okay, then I, trading activities. Neither the buyer, that's the Kramers, nor any of its affiliates, the Kramers affiliates, has an open short position in the common stock of the company and the buyer, the Kramers, agree that it shall not and that it will cause its affiliates not to engage in any short sales of or hedging transactions with respect to the common stock of the company. Now this, well number one, uh, it's saying right there, remember I told you the other day the SEC is going after liars? I'm not gonna say, it's right there, right there I'll hold it up for you to see it I'm not gonna say whether or not the Kramers are lying by making that assertion but I think it's as I just show you in the trading activity um, I think there's enough evidence in the trading activity to wonder if in fact this is true but we'll see uh, now, the other thing about this sentence here, it doesn't have any time frame. It doesn't say that the Kramers agrees that it shall not, so we don't. It says that they haven't done it, and they say it shall not, and it will cause its affiliates not to engage in any short sales of or hedging transactions. But it doesn't, does it, is that just for one day? Is that for eternity? I would, I would say lawyers could make a living off of that. Uh, but because it's not defined, I think when it says shall not, it means forever. Because it's not limited. They did not limit it. So if the Kramers started shorting against this, which I think they did, or its affiliates, which I think it's possible someone just down the hall how do you define affiliate? It's not defined in here as affiliate. Somebody you share a bathroom with and you, you know, you wash your hands after you take a leak together and say, How, how's the wife? Or is an affiliate someone you're paying? Or both? Um, or is it, you know, is it just a handshake agreement? I don't know. Okay, so then number five in here, transfer agent instructions. The company shall issue, I told you about this in the other examples irrevocable instructions to its transfer agent to issue certificates registered in the name of the buyer or its nominee for the conversion shares in such amounts as specified from time to time i'm not going to read the whole definition because you heard it the other day but in other words there's an instruction at the transfer agent that when the kramers ask for stock the the transfer agent automatically has to give it it's an irrevocable transfer agent instruction. And it's a big, long paragraph. I'm skipping a lot, but what I said is right up there. I'll probably have to go over this document again someday, but I just want to do it quickly. Governing, governing law, state of New York. We already know that uh, there's some questions about these contracts there. Okay. All right, here, this is not um, more than just two people in their, in their web, the spider's web. And that's something the hamster talked about on the call, that, because he's talking to enforcement people at the SEC, at FINRA, and he's also talking to, I think he said, the FBI or the Department of Justice but he's talking to head honchos and they, to a man or woman, say they wanna get the whole web. They don't just wanna get one guy, they wanna get everybody. So anyway, uh, under notices, see right there? Notices go to Allison Nadich, who I think must be the daughter of the lawyer Nadich, but I'm, that's by memory. But it's Allison Nadich at Nadich Worman LLP. Now, she might be a lawyer. 111 Great Neck Road, Suite 214 Great Neck, New York. Well, let's go back over up top here and see where the Kramers reside, at least this entity. 
Geneva Roth Remark Holdings address for business is 111 Great Neck Road, Suite 216. So they're just down the hall or across the hall or in a different cubicle or they just have a different mailbox slot. So they're Suite 216 and his attorneys are Suite 214. Okay, and then I'm going to show you at the end. Signature, Kurt Kramer. And you can see the net on the bottom that they received in yellow, 68000 But if you take the 3000 for expenses off of there, it's 65000 that was transferred on the 30th. Okay, the prince, here's the note. <coughs> Here's the actual note that was signed. The principal amount and the, the discount given to the Kramers. Right, at, right away, they get a discount. So the principal amount, 74,800. The purchase price, 68,000. For value received, this is called convertible promissory note. 10%. Uh, I'm, I'm going to highlight these because it's, it's a lot and I always go too long, but it's 10%. This note may not be repaid in whole or in part except as otherwise explicitly set forth herein. Any amount of principal interest in this note which is not paid in, when due shall bear an interest at the rate of 22%. So they think they're staying under usury requirements. Interest is computed, blah, blah, blah. All right, conversion rate. Article 1, conversion rights. Conversion right. The holder shall have, the holder being the Kramers, shall have from time to time and at any time during the period beginning on the date, which is 180 days following the date of this note. Anyway, it gives, gives different ways they can convert. I'm, I'm not going to go through it. This is an interesting point, which I don't fully understand, I have to admit. The number of shares of common stock issuable uh, in no event shall the holder be entitled, entitled to convert any portion of this note in excess of that portion of this note upon conversion of which the sum, the number of shares You know what, I'm just gonna skip it and I'll talk about it another time. There, There's some sort of complicated formula. But the beneficial ownership limitations on conversion is set forth in the section may not be waived by the holder. The holder being GTII, the buyer being the Kramer. The term conversion amount means with respect to any conversion of the note, the sum of the principal amount uh, converted in such conversion plus at the holder's option accrued and unpaid interest. Okay, that's another complicated form. So now the conversion price. The conversion price shall be a variable conversion price defined herein subject to, to adjustments. So it's gonna be 75% multiplied by the market price, as defined, representing a discount of 25%. Market price, here it is, see, market price. Market price means the average of the lowest three trading prices. Three trading prices and trading prices is also defined for the common stock during the 15 trading day period ending on the latest complete trading day prior to conversion. Uh, trading price means, here's the definition, the closing bid, it's not even the closing price, I was wrong, it's the closing bid. No wonder they come in and always hammer the bid. The closing bid price on the Q, OTC, QB, OTC, QX, pink sheets, electronic quotation system, or another market, 
as reported by a reliable reporting service designated by the holder, designated by the Kramers, If there's no closing bid of such a security available, they'll use the pink sheets, which is another notorious place for pricing. So anyway, it's the, it's the closing bid on the lowest three days for the three weeks prior to conversion. And remember, they can convert part of this all along. So they're not waiting till the end of 180 days. They're not taking the risk on their entire short position unless they want to. If it's going in their direction, they'll hold it. But if it's not, they'll they'll convert it and they'll cap their risk. And they've got 25% plus on a low price stock. I would guess the difference between the bid and the ask can be another five or 10 or 15% on top of that. Um, There's another closet here I've got to find that is amazing. Um, authorized shares, GTII uh, states that they're going to reserve enough shares for this conversion at five times the initial amount. I calculated the initial amount at roughly 600,000 shares, but here it says 9,777,777,000. That's the reserved amount of shares. Okay. Uh, they have to deliver the stock within three days, which is kind of T plus two. This is the thing. Uh, the, the borrower's obligation to issue and deliver the certificates of common stock shall be absolute and unconditional irrespective of the absence of any action by the holder to enforce the same and blah 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 it, it goes on further and it says that the it, it has to be done even if the borrower, the GTII, says that the holder's in breach. This is an interesting thing. I, I, delivery is to their prime broker. Okay, the shares of common stock issuable upon conversion of this note may not be sold or transferred unless such shares are sold pursuant to an effective registration statement. That's the obligation the Kramers are under. Under the act, the borrower or its transfer agent shall have been furnished with an opinion of counsel. Remember the lawyers in the suite across the hall, uh, which opinion shall be in form, substance, and scope customary for opinions of counsel in, a, in similar situations to the effect that the shares to be sold or transferred may be sold or transferred pursuant to an exemption from such regulation under the act, that stamp I showed you at the beginning. Such shares are transferred to an affiliate as defined under rule 144 of the borrower who agrees to sell or otherwise transfer the shares only in accordance with this section, who is an accredited investor. I know I skipped stuff there that made that confusing, but basically they're trying to en encompass everybody. Any restrictive legend on the certificates representing shares of stock shall be removed after the 180 days, and the borrower shall issue to the holder a new certificate free of that legend. You remove the restriction. And here's the, here's the thing that just it's amazing. They remember Kramer went with his opi opinion brief to the other court and said this is risky business for for guys like he. Well, look at this. In the event that the company does not reasonably accept the opinion of counsel provided by the holder by the Kramers with respect to the transfer of securities pursuant 
to an exemption from registration, such as Rule 144, at the deadline, it will be considered an event of default. So the company has to agree with Kramer's attorney, the Kramer's interpretation of whether or not uh, the shares are being sold to the public market uh, is not a violation of the registration requirements of selling shares to the public market. All right, it, it has the same sort of prepayment schedule that I told you in the other one. In this case, I think that GTI, I bought back this note. If they did it, it was, remember, it was end of November to February. So that's December, January. So if they did it within 60 days, they paid 115% to buy it back. If they did it within 90 days, which is what it looked like, they paid 120%. The next break is 125. I'm going to skip all the default. I'm, I'm skipping a lot of pages because it's it really gets. I know I'm uh, boring you, but here's Geneva Roth Remark Holdings. See here, and here's the lawyer. Uh, suite 214, Suite 216, right across the hall. Or in the next room. They're closer than you and I are. At the bottom, sign. This is an example of the delivery instructions. Kurt Kramer, president of Geneva Roth Remark Holdings. So if, despite what uh, Gibson Dunn might be saying, I don't know, I don't know for sure, but the truth is the Kramers are involved with having financed this note with GTI. Okay, I just want to show you this and then ask you a couple of questions, then I'll go. This is a printout of the volume and the closing prices, low prices, high prices of the stock for the last five years. You can get this by going to NASDAQ historical prices. You can type into Google GTII NASDAQ historical prices and you can get this data yourself. From 2017 onward, you see all these NA NA, 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 NA. It traded by appointment for, with some exceptions, but for most of 2017, it traded by appointment. There were many days there was no volume. Same with 2018. Um, I mean, I just randomly, I'm picking that, just picking it up as I'm talking to you. You see all those NAAs? This is 3 8 2018 to 5 14 2018. So then in the middle of 2018, what I did is yellow, yellow daily volumes that were over 100,000. So right in the middle of 2018, there was, it looks like a total of uh, maybe one and a half to two million shares traded. I don't know why I didn't study it. It could be insider selling, it could be another note offering, it could be short selling. At the end of 2018, there was one, two, maybe three, three and a half million shares traded at the end. And these prices were in the 30 to 40 cent range. But none of this really bothers us. And then 19, it had more, it had volume every day. But it only had, for 2019, for the entire time, it had three, seven, um, 11, 12. For all of 2019, roughly, it had 12 days that traded over 100,000 shares. So we get into 2020. And it's interesting, there's 
here in March of 2020, in over the course of three days, there's about um, a little over a million shares traded. Is that a short? I don't know. And then in five eight five four. What's five? Is that April um, there or May? There's uh, another sort of. I don't know, 600,000 traded in three days. But the rest of the year, everything's under 100,000 and mostly well under 100,000. So then what, you know, I've, I wonder, and this goes back to this chart, I wonder when did, when did uh, GTI get in touch with the Kramers? Was it just before they took the note or was it months months before probably it was at least 60 days before because most uh, uh, legal documents take 30 30 45 days but could it have been months before or the other thing is could the Kramers have been shorting the stock previously and then they call up GTII and offer them money so they already have money from shorting that they can buy at a, a lower price. That's a pattern that these guys do. I don't know if what happened in this case. But what is interesting, so this was a November note in, in July and August, you start seeing volume pick up. I'd say that was seven or eight entries right there. But you get into late August, in early September, again, there's there's a little bit of a pop up in volume. Um, I'd say about a million shares traded over seven days. But then look at this. <laughs> this is when the note was announced, where I have the blue line. That's the 27th of November. On the 30th, it's the line right above. So there must have been a weekend. That must have been a Friday, and then the 30th was a Monday. But look in the month of November, starting the last days of October, in that 30 days. See, I put a big bracket around the previous 30 days. So my hypothesis is that while they're negotiating this deal, the Kramers are selling stock because they know they're going to sign the deal. And uh, so they sold, I'm just gonna go with the big numbers. The volume on 1029 was 250,000. On 11.5 was 100,000. On 11.6 it was 250,000. On uh, 11.9 it was 180,000. On 11.11 it was 305,000. On 11.12 it was 210,000. On 11.13 it was 180,000. On 11.16 it was 225,000. And on uh, 1123, it was 106,000. On 1125, it was 100,000. And on 1130, it was 100,000. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 days, 12 days in the 30, well above 100,000 in many cases, but 12 days out of 30, $100,000. And remember, when I say 30 days, that's uh, that's uh, 20 trading days. So 12 days, roughly, 12 trading days out of 20 roughly trading days, the volume was well over 100,000. But let me just give you one example. I, now, I took on the, on the 27th, the closing price was 11. I took the lowest price of uh, 10 cents roughly ten, all day it was 11 cents 10 cents to 11 cents now this is a question i want to ask you it, are the kramers issuing at that time because that's when they're lending the money are they issuing the amount of shares are they creating the amount of shares that would just on a straight line convert and i come up with 600,000 shares if you divide Sixty-five thousand dollars that they that the Kramers gave to GTII, 
if you divide that by 11 cents, I got 600,000 shares. Or are they creating, for purposes of the de definition of the Securities Act, you can't be a dealer, are they creating essentially millions of shares, these high numbers here, and then the volume afterward, up, by the way, the, the note gets paid off at that line on the next page. So, um, and there's a bunch, there's a bunch of sales between in those three months. So to stick by a Gibson's done, Gibson Dunn's hard to believe admonition that the Kramers haven't sold anything after uh, the note was required. Some idiot stepped in their shoes on their own there's plenty of stocks to short that you can make a lot more money on than this. This is, this, do you think this is, our money's trapped? Do you feel like our money's dead in this? The short's money is dead. The short has been in this now at least two years. And I, I personally think a lot of the selling previously was by the Kramers in preparation for this. You know, they did a deal with a company in Florida called Global Tech industrial or something gtll gtll and i you know i think it's a lot like a, a, a sex offender they groom i think they groom these companies in advance they they can see you know it's a it's a and and the poor ceo is getting up every morning what am i doing with my life they finally take the note but that a lot of that is supposition that's just opinion and you know what opinions are like. So uh, I picked one day here in the middle on February 9th. That's before the note closed out. They sold a million seven hundred, a million eight hundred shares. Now that was at a dollar twenty. That's when I, word was coming out on the street, and I think that's when this uh, I, idea was presented to the hamster. But just that day, the Kramers probably took in eight or nine hundred thousand dollars if you use some of the percentage assumptions. Now, they, they can't use that money until they deliver the shares in this situation because it's so live. Um, and if that was a true short, they can't take that money out. But if they're successful in driving this stock towards toward bankruptcy, or just being a sub penny stock, they could start pulling some of that money out of the uh, their LLCs. Um, in the in the Venu uh, uh, lawsuit, they allege there's a lot of LLCs, and I think that's right. So I'm going back to my question, and this is, you know, intellectual. <laughs> it's not intellectual, but it's. It's in the sense that a lawyer wants just facts. This is supposing. But did the Kramers create 600,000 shares with this note? Or did they create 9 million? Did they create uh, more than 9 million, which is what we believe, with by creating this note? Let me state it differently. The act. Uh, right, the Securities Act of 1933 and then the, the Act of 34. You have to be a registered securities dealer to sell shares to the public markets. You have to have a uh, disclosure. You have to disclose it. You have to have a prospectus, and the prospectus is cost, they probably cost 250 grand to put together. Uh, maybe more. Um, uh, you know, before I forget that point, <laughs> look at this day. Look at this day. This is 11, this is January 11th of 2021. The, that's within the time frame of the note. So that I'm going to say it's the Kramers sold uh, at least 50% if these averages 
hold true of the volume of 172 million shares. The stock closed at seven cents. It was high as 10 cents. So they got about $8,000 that day out of that sale. Do you know how much Gibson Dunn costs? Gibson Dunn, one attorney is probably charging three grand, 1500 to three grand an hour. And you, they're gonna have several attorneys working on it. They're gonna charge five to $800 for their legal aid. They, those guys are spending four, three, four, five thousand $5,000 an hour at Gibson Dunn. You, 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 you think crime is free? It costs money. So now I've, I've forgotten the other point I was about to make. Uh, it, but in essence, what I'm asking you from the, from the intellectually, the Securities Act is, is designed so that for a company, for, for David Reitman and GTII to go to the public, they have to disclose what they're doing. They have to put all sorts of language in there describing the risks of the investment. And they have to explain the use of proceeds of the money. They have to say what their salary is. They have to say what inside, how much insiders owe, own and owe, I guess, the company how much it owes. They, they need a statement of financials, the balance sheet, the cap table, um, how many shares are outstanding. Uh, all of these are required information to give to the public before the public buys stock. So my question I'm asking you, by creating this note, this convertible promissory note, are the Kramers uh, uh, just creating a note? Are they creating shares that might, ha might have an exemption underneath this uh, 33 Act? simply because just to remind you of some of them i can't find it but remind they're just selling to an accredited investor who agrees not to resell them and it's a and it's a small amount of money as a small amount issue a number of shares relative to the outstanding shares or are they are they creating uh, nine million shares as they in as in the reserve or because this is their, you know, was it Linus in Charlie Brown that had a blanket that he would suck while he played the piano? Is this their security blanket? So they free to go, feel free to go out and just pour uh, shares that don't exist into the market because they can come back and cover them or most of them. And remember the companies, if you drive it down far enough, the companies become non, you know, they're non-viable. So, my, so that's my question. And I think this is the problem for the Kramers. Um, and I think that they delighted uh, this question with the fog of confusion and they check the boxes and they, they have this, you know, they get the, borrow, the borrower to say, you're not stealing from me. No, I agree, you're not stealing. You don't have a gun in your hand, uh, which is probably, I'm, I'm going, it's probably true in the case there's no gun, but there's, they're desperate, they're desperate. Um, or are they creating the millions of shares that they're shorting? It boils down to this, my question. The company could do this themselves. The company could sell stock without disclosing anything, with, with lying, with just pumping stock into the market uh, without following the rules, they could do that themselves. The difference is because of Reg Show, um, guys like Citadel own market makers, but guys like the Kramers use this network, like Kramer, like uh, Hamster was talking about today on the call. GTSM, a shitty uh, market maker. JNE, I think, is just an electronic one. But OTCX, NITE, INTL, WABR, among others. So they've got, they don't need to own their own market maker. They probably put money under the table. They give them commission for sure by giving, directing trades to them. So that's the question. The company could do this themselves if they violated the law. So, 
the Kramers are, in a way, acting as an agent for the company without the company's knowledge, without the company's knowledge. That's why I think the company bought it back once they realized what's going on. Uh, uh, the agents are committing a crime initially on behalf of the just for $65,000. But then when the Kramers sell, they get millions of dollars. So that, <laughs> you can see I haven't, I, I didn't isolate this question for you. But the point is, if the company did it, let's say the company sold 9 million shares at 10 cents, that'd be a million dollars roughly. They would give you a prospectus. They would tell you how much it costs to, to raise the funds. They'd warn you, don't invest unless you can lose everything. They would tell you that the uh, use of proceeds is bip, 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 and uh, you would have it all there. And they and the money would go to the company and the underwriter. Well, in the case of the Kramers, they're creating nine million, or we suspect maybe as many as a hundred million shares that don't exist under the initial auspices of this claimed exemption under the act, but the, you, what's the use of proceeds? Where are the proceeds going? Well, we know 65,000 went to the company. Where's the rest of the proceeds going? We, we where the, where's the rest of the proceeds? They are selling stock into the public markets without a registration document, but where's the money going? Is that breaking, breaking the spirit of the law? The, um, you know, when, when uh, GTII first entered into the note, they, I can't find it right here, but they, uh, they announced the note, and it was heartbreaking to read that the chairman, uh, Reich, Reiki, as he called him, said, you know, we look forward, this is the beginning of a fruitful relationship. We can fulfill our goals and we're excited to work with a, such an upstanding source of funds as, as uh, Geneva Roth Remark Holdings. And then it just turns out all to be a, all to be a misrepresentation. All right. Um, I wanted to get into you that into your heads but I also want to tell you don't don't despair right now the one of the other things I learned when I was a broker when a stock trades by appointment and you need to get out get out when there's volume but when there's no volume you kind of just have to wait and Kramer pointed it out I mean uh, hamster pointed it out on his call I don't think anything has changed. And the reason I've went through all of this is to show you the, the volumes of stock traded um, before and after. Look at all that volume that came in. That's, that's, imagine if the shorts weren't there, what would have happened? And I showed you the website where you can get from FINRA. I, and I'll, I'm gonna show it to you again. I'm going to show it to you again. This short interest, OT short report, OTC short report. But what I want to show you is the top of the page. I'm not going to be able to find it just when I want to end the call quickly. Hopefully I can find it. Hopefully I can find it. Doesn't look I'm, like I'm going to be able to prove to you what I want to tell you. But if you go to the website, it says on it that the data is from FINRA. It is from the uh, regulatory body. But the the shorts, the Kermits are still trading 50% short every single day, and so that's been going on. It went on during the note, and we have good reason, we being the collective we, uh, have good reason to believe that there was a lot of shorting before the note would happen. And uh, I'll try to look into that if there was another financing. So what you know while you wait, what you know is the there's a large make it short position. 
what you know is the company has a lot of fundamentals that are good and the con so therefore it is highly unlikely that the Kramers are going to be able to cause this stock to go to zero and uh, not only highly unlikely I think the stock is going to have quite a bit of positive surprises on the fundamental side you can argue what they're worth that's that's up to analysts but um, you got 1-800 lawyers out there you, you still got this potential big gold deal down south you've got several smaller companies you've got the, the Bitcoin okay you know that you know you're gonna have fundamental news you know you're gonna have the uh, uh, share count right now I don't think you're gonna see it but I, it's probably already at the regulatory bodies so all you need is someone to say we got to buy in and and the thing that I'm gonna try to do I didn't finish it like I promised, but I'm going to try to get to the, and I think that anybody out there can do it. I'm, it's nothing special about me, but I'm going to try to get to the market makers. I wish I could get to the prime broker, but maybe it'll filter back in. That the Kramers no longer have these reserve shares to sell the stock again against. So unless you want to be part of some post killing murder conspiracy um, you better the market makers better make sure that those are legitimate shares they're selling that are long or they're legitimate borrowed shares and I think once you can once we again collectively can cause the market makers to step away because they don't believe that the shares are either real as borrowed shares or real as as Longs, um, the Kramers can't, uh, and the Kermits, the Kramers and the Kermits, the special K's, cannot um, short the stock anymore. And then what happens? Then it's up to uh, fundamentals. But then what might happen is what they're doing is they're moving shares from, from one brokerage firm's account. Bear Stearns doesn't exist anymore to Shearson Lehman by Bear Stearns calls up and says uh, you haven't delivered you're 21 days late uh, Shearson has another LLC buys that position so they just move it around well if the Kramers can't keep doing that and the and the Kermits there's going to be buy-ins and that's what we're waiting for but we can't know when that happens and so do not despair if you're if you decide to wait to see if a buy-in happens do not despair that the stock went from two dollars to a dollar six don't even despair if it goes to to um, you know some number underneath it's all fake trades they're not real trades a thousand shares if they get if they uh, move a thousand shares at a dollar six it's a thousand dollars it's, it's moving the entire $300 million complex downward <laughs> because they're manipulating it. They're breaking the law. And I think enough of this is getting out. And just picture uh, uh, David Reichman. He has to put his name on the line, everything he does. The shorts hide behind the skirts like the bullies they are and the uh, scaredy cats, fraidy cats that they are. They hide behind these expensive attorneys and, uh, you know, a fog of documents. But in essence, they're stealing money. And uh, the way they're doing it is they don't have to fill out any of these forms. They don't have to put their name on the line. In fact, they hide, most of them hide behind LLCs. But what's interesting about LLCs is you have to give a social security number or a tax ID number so a good court can figure out who the owner is, except in a couple of jurisdictions. Anyway, um, Reichman has to sign off on all this. Well, right now, as CEO, one of the fundamental things that a CEO has to be able to tell investors, how many shares are there? What, if I give you money, what percent of the company am I buying? 
he can't answer that as with with the uh, uh, anomalies in the share count that have been announced. So you've got. Let me go to the extremes. You got 150 million potentially of shares long in our accounts versus 30 or 35 million in the public float. That's a big. That's a big difference, and that has to be bought in. So I guess I'll leave it there. Um, I wish I could end on an upbeat note. Uh, but yeah, this stock, that's one thing I'll say to you. This stock is trading by appointment. These prices don't matter. These are, these are meaningless prices. There's no market, there's no price discovery going on. There's no real understanding of what these shares are, should be trading for right now. Uh, it's all manipulated. So you, if you can, ignore it. Uh, if you want to get out and move on, uh, I guess, you know, that's, we all make our choices. But if you're in it, we won't know when the uplift will come. Make sure you have GTC orders in. And I'll just say it over again. Uh, whether the, the rally comes from a dollar six and goes to uh, 1,060, or it starts at $2, and goes to $1,000. Maybe it changes the percentage move a little bit, but you're not gonna care. You're not gonna care that, you're not even gonna remember that the stock was down. The story you will remember is that the price went from a dollar to a thousand dollars in a spike and maybe higher. And remember, it went to $500 50 minutes. So with that, I'm going to say cheers and wish you the best and uh, say, say hi to your dog and cat and horse. Be kind to your web-footed friends. Anyway, talk to you later.